So right out of high school, I joined the United States Air Force. Um, and while I was in, I was deployed. Um, I volunteered to go. Uh, I think my main reason was to, I know I didn't want to do 20 years in, so my enlistment was four years, so I wanted to do something that I val validated as being important, just being deployed. I wanted to do what I had to do. Um, so I got deployed, and I ended up at a place called Camp Buka, Iraq. And Camp Buka was the largest detainee facility in Iraq. Large prison, outdoors. Um, and I was part of the legal team there, so what we did is we created these boards for all the um, inmates to review their files, go through them, because a lot of people got rounded up who were innocent. You know, they'd find a wire to a house, they'd arrest everybody in the house. They never had their chance to kind of just have their voice heard. So we created these boards called uh, TIFRIC boards. And we basically, when I got there, there was like 22,000 detainees. And by the time we left, we got it down to like 16,000. Um, but that was in itself pretty surreal because I feel like if whoever got put in there, if they didn't hate Americans, prior, they definitely had a bad taste in their mouth afterwards. Um, a lot of people were innocent and they were in there for years, you know. Um, plus it was just crazy being in a prison in southern Iraq. It was just very surreal. Um, uh, we got rocketed and mortared a lot, stuff like that. My enlistment comes up, I get out. My brother's in the army at the time. And on his second deployment, he was killed in Afghanistan. Um, so, yeah, so I was out of the military when that happened. Um, so I had my issues regarding PTSD, and then on top of that, added this grief of losing my brother. Um, so then I started making art, <clears throat> getting into art, I should say, um, and just trying to process all that was in my head and how I was feeling. And art at that time really gave me this avenue of expression. So I've been doing that ever since. It's still working through it. It was strange because I was always making art like for like my squadron I designed the t-shirt logo and our coin I designed our coin and um, it was always there I just never really tapped into it and then at the time right before my brother was killed um, kind of your classic uh, boy meets girl. She was an artist and I really liked her. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start taking art classes. Um, that lasted longer than our relationship at the time, you know? Um, but then I just, I just fell in love. Obviously, I, I started out really kind of with like um, the post impressionists. Um, I loved Matisse, obviously Van Gogh. And I just like went, deep into art history. Learning as much as I can, trying to emulate styles of earlier painters, and I just fell in love with painting. Um, so at that time too, I was like, okay, how can I use this to, uh, to get what I have inside out? And that's kind of how I got into it. So I started at community college and then I transferred to University of Hartford. Okay. And I went to their art school. Um, that was interesting just because I was like the oldest person on campus kind of deal. Um, but the professors there are, especially in the painting department, um, really took me kind of under their wing. Um, there's an artist, Power Booth, abstract artist, and Kat Balco is, I think, now the chair of the art department. Um, but they really helped me uh, visualize what I was thinking, you know. Um, so, I, you know, I have in, in my presentation, I have a lot of that early work and you can tell it's very raw, very vulnerable, but still kind of edgy, meaning just not refined in a way. Um, and then, you know, after undergrad, I was figuring out, you know, I, I felt like I still, I love being in that educational atmosphere and learning. Um, so then I applied to grad schools and I was lucky enough to get into 
the University of Glasgow, of their art school in Scotland, UK. At the time when I graduated undergrad, I thought my work at the time was very good. And so I was like, all right, I'm just going to shoot my shot at all the top art schools in the country. Um, I got into Chicago Institute Studio Art Program. Um, but it's, I guess it wouldn't technically have been an MFA. So then I went, I don't know why I applied to Glasgow School of Art. I've always had like an affinity towards Scotland. I don't know. I've always wanted to go to Scotland. I typed in, uh, there's obviously like the Royal Academy of Arts is obviously, you know, the, the school in London. Um, but then I checked it elsewhere. Um, and I got in and then a gentleman who I went to high school with lived in Scotland, Glasgow. So I contacted him. He let me sleep on his couch for six months till I found a place. It just all kind of fell in. I loved Braveheart growing up. I don't know. And like, I just always, yeah, I don't know. I did a lot of traveling obviously in the military, but I figured, you know, this is an experience that I, cut, I probably shouldn't have turned down. So I just made the, made the jump. It was really tough. Um, a lot of the other artists there were conceptual artists and um, could speak really well about the context of their work, I guess you could say. Um, where I'm just trying to like paint my heart out on a canvas. And I think that it was almost looked at as um, not in the now. It's kind of, uh, I felt like I got a lot of, um, you know, it's very an old thing to do is, is, is to paint your emotions and, and uh, try to use yourself as the subject rather than taking outside things and then making that the subject, if that makes sense. Um, it was really tough. I, I had a difficult time, um, but my professors were, they were really about, you know, utilizing what I've been through to make work. So I did that and I, I went through a lot of different ways of doing it. And then, but by the end of grad school, I made some really successful paintings, um, that were powerful. They're genuine. Um, and they're, they're mine. You know, they're, they spoke of what I wanted them to speak of. Um, but then again, too, my whole thing was getting, having my story almost overshadow my work. You know, um, I didn't like always having to tell, you know, I'm an Iraqi war veteran. I lost my brother in Afghanistan. Then I made paintings. I figured the work should be able to at least kind of speak for itself. And I think it does now. Um, but that's what I really struggled with in grad school. I think initially everyone's like, oh, this guy was in the military. He's this probably gun-toting Americana guy, you know? And I feel veteran artists are pretty rare, I would, I would say, I, I, and especially making work from that. I, um, so I really had to kind of battle with that. Um, but at the same time, too, the work, when I did, you know, with my peers, they, they, they understood that, like, I took it very seriously. You know, this is, I'm not making work just to kind of make work. I'm, I'm really, I'm, you know, I'm using these very raw emotions to power whatever I have to say. Um, so I think a lot of the professors took notice. Um, you know, it's, it's tough when I meet other artists and we talk about like why you make work, you know, and, and then I tell them why I make work and it's like, whoa, like, like, uh, like, I don't know. It's, 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 it's this weird dialogue, you know, that, that I have not that like to make mine more validating because I'm making work off these emotions, but, um, all the art history, historical artists that I've always admired and gravitated to make work kind of similar to how I do. They're um, very honest um, and vulnerable.